many properties such as boiling point, freezing point, melting point, vapor pressure, surface tension, to name a few, all have to do with the intermolecular forces found between the molecules. The stronger the attraction, the more energy will be needed to break that attraction, so the boiling point will increase. So if we have some substances and their boiling points, just knowing that the higher the boiling point, the higher the IMF, we can deduce which one must have the strongest IMF. So which substance must have the strongest IMF, H2O, I2, or CH3Cl? If you said I2, you're correct. I2 has the highest boiling point, so it must have the highest intermolecular forces. While CH3Cl has the lowest boiling point, so it has the weakest attraction between its molecules. But if you don't have data given, then we're going to say that ionic bonds are the strongest, then hydrogen bonds, dipole-dipole, and London dispersion forces are the weakest. This is not always true, as we saw in the last example. I2 is London dispersion forces, but it has a much higher boiling point than H2O's hydrogen bonds or CH3Cl's dipole-dipole attractions. But without looking up that information, this is the general guidelines. Ionic is going to be the strongest, London is going to be the weakest. So the first thing that you're going to do is identify the type of IMF found in each of these compounds. Then determine which has the stronger IMF and then circle the one with the higher boiling point. So this first one, NAF, the first question you should ask yourself is does it start with a metal? Sodium is a metal, it's on the left of the periodic table, so since it starts with a metal, we have a metal and a nonmetal, then this must be ionic. CCl4, you could draw out if you didn't know what it looked like, but you have carbon in the middle and you have four chlorides coming off. Carbon can't have any extra electrons because all it can have is four bonds, therefore it's nonpolar. I have the same thing all the way around, no lone pairs. So out of ionic and London dispersion, ionic is stronger, and since ionic is stronger, it has the higher the boiling point. Go ahead and do the next four on your own. Make sure you're identifying what type of intermolecular force is in each of them, which one is stronger, and then circle the one with the higher boiling point. Restart when you have the next two problems done. Br2 has one bond, and that bond is nonpolar, so the entire compound must be nonpolar. And then HF is polar, because I have one bond with different elements, which makes it polar. If it's polar, you should be asking yourself, do you have hydrogen attached to N, O, or F, which you do, so that's hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds are stronger than LDF, so HF, we would expect to have a higher boiling point than Br2. For the last one, they both have lone pairs on the central atom, so they're both polar. This one, I have hydrogen, but I don't have N, O, or F, so that's dipole-dipole. In water, I have a polar molecule, but I have hydrogen attached to oxygen, so that's hydrogen bonding. Out of dipole and hydrogen, hydrogen is stronger, so we would expect water to have a higher boiling point than H2S. But what if you have two that are LDF, or two that are ionic? If you have two that are ionic, you're going to first look at the charge and then the size. The higher the charge, the stronger the ionic attraction. Or the smaller the size, the stronger the ionic attraction. So between NAF and Na2O, we look on the periodic table and sodium has a plus one charge. Fluoride is a negative one charge. And oxygen is a negative two charge when it's in an ionic compound. Multiplying those together, 1 times 1 is 1, and 1 times 2 is 2. So Na2O has the greater charges, therefore it would have the stronger ionic attraction. For the next two, 
I have LIF, so lithium is a plus one, fluoride is a negative one, and chloride is a negative one. So notice I have the exact same charges. One and one is, or one times one is one for both of them. So because the charges are the same, now I'm going to look at size. If you recall from our periodicity unit, atoms get larger as you go left and down. Fluoride and chloride, I want the smaller size. Fluoride is smaller than chloride. Therefore, LIF must have a stronger attraction than LICL. If you're looking at two London dispersion forces, you're going to look at the total number of electrons. So the more electrons it has, the stronger the LDF or London dispersion force. So looking at CH4, I have carbon, which has six electrons. I'm looking at the atomic number and hydrogen has one. So I have four hydrogens and one carbon. So that's 10 electrons altogether. Out of carbon and chlorine, chlorine has 17, 17 times four plus six gives me 74. CCL4 has way more electrons, so its London dispersion forces are going to be stronger than CH4s. Neon and radon are both noble gases. They both have eight valence electrons, but I'm looking at total electrons. Neon has 10 electrons, and radon has 86. Radon has more electrons, so radon has a stronger LDF attraction than neon does. So go ahead and pause the video and try these just like we did before. Identify the type of IMF found in each of these six compounds, determine who's the stronger out of each pair, and then circle the one with the higher boiling point. So for the first one, aluminum is a metal, so we have a metal and a nonmetal, so that's ionic. MgO, we have a metal and a nonmetal, so that's also ionic. Since they're both ionic, we should be looking at the charges. Aluminum's a 3, oxygen's a 2, magnesium's a 2, oxygen's a 2. So that gives us a 6 versus a 4. Well, six is larger than four, so aluminum oxide must have the stronger IMF. And if it has the stronger IMF, it would take more energy to boil it, so it's got the higher boiling point. NH3, you should have said, was polar. And since it's polar, it's either hydrogen or dipole-dipole. We have hydrogen attached to NO or F, so it's hydrogen bonded. While Br2, we have one bond, and it's between the same elements. Therefore, it's nonpolar. All of the diatomics are always nonpolar. So that's going to be LDF. Well, out of hydrogen and LDF, hydrogen is stronger. So hydrogen has the higher boiling point. Now, the last two, we just said that all diatomics are nonpolar. So both of those must be LDF. Looking at the periodic table, bromine has 35 times 2 electrons, while fluorine has 9 times 2 electrons. So 70 versus 18. Since bromine has more electrons, it has the stronger IMF, and therefore it has the higher boiling point. On GoFormative, you're going to have problems similar to this on your worksheet. It's going to be set up in this exact same format, so let's go over two problems like you would on your worksheet. So just like we were doing a second ago, first identify your type of IMF found in each of these compounds. Restart when you have your type of IMF found in these four compounds. The first one you should have said was ionic, because we have a metal and a polyatomic ion. If it starts with a metal, it's going to be ionic. The next one, if you drew that out, you'd have a lone pair on P. Since we have a lone pair on P, it's going to be polar. But I don't have any hydrogen, so it's got to be dipole-dipole. The next one, if you drew it out, you would have five chlorines coming off of P, 
no lone pairs. So the same thing all the way around. No lone pairs is nonpolar. So that would be Lenin dispersion forces. Anytime you have just C and H, it's always nonpolar. But if you were to draw that out, again, carbon's in the middle with no lone pairs, so that's nonpolar. So then you're going to look at these two and say, out of ionic and dipole-dipole, who has the higher IMF? Well, ionic is stronger, so Na2SO4 must have the higher IMF. Then you've got to decide who has the higher boiling point. Well, if it has the higher IMF, it should also have the higher boiling point. Out of these two LDFs, I need to look at number of electrons. PCL5 versus CH4, PCL5 is going to have way more electrons than CH4 does. So PCL5 has the higher IMF because it's got more electrons. Since it's got the higher IMF, it also would have the higher boiling point. If it asked for lower boiling point, then these would have been opposite. So go to goformative.com and answer these IMF property questions.